2022 has been quite a year for Linux. We've seen a lot of massive projects just getting started and many others making a lot of progress. And considering that it's the end of 2022, the start of 2023, depending on when I upload this, I thought it'd be nice to talk about some of the things that I'm excited for and I'm keeping an eye on going into this new year. Firstly, let's look towards the stars and talk about Cosmic, the new Pop! OS Cosmic Desktop, which is different from the old Pop! OS Cosmic Desktop, which is basically GNOME with a bunch of theming and a bunch of plugins, because this desktop is not based on GNOME whatsoever. This is a whole new desktop environment, pretty much entirely written in Rust, using toolkits you've probably not heard of called Iced and Slint. These have worked on Linux in the past, but haven't really had that much traction and definitely have not had a full desktop built around them. And along with this, being built on a completely separate compositor library from WL Roots, Mutter, or Kwin, it is being built on Smithy. And like with those GUI toolkits, this is the first major project using it. While these might look really good on paper, whenever you bring these into a real world situation, you're going to realize very quickly there is a lot of extra work that needs to be done. So many of the Pop! OS engineers are now the major contributors on these projects. And we don't know exactly how it's going to look when it's completely done, but we do have some early screenshots to see pretty much a rough idea, but considering they're early, they're always subject to change. And people have criticized the way they currently look, and personally, I think it actually looks pretty good. But with this new desktop, they want to take on some massive challenges. One of those being good NVIDIA support. The way that I interpret that is on par or better than what GNOME is doing over on Wayland. If they can do that, I will be very impressed. They also want to have a hyper-customizable panel and dock, which, you know, doesn't sound that crazy, but I would like to see something that's easy to work with. You don't need to be this, you know, extremely experienced programmer to really understand the documentation. And they're also saying they want to work on HDR support, which doesn't exist anywhere on the typical Linux desktop. So there's a chance in the future, if this goes well, this will be the third major DE. We're not really sure what it's going to be yet because the first proper ready to ship version is supposed to come out sometime in 2023. Now I know I'm a broken record, but on Wayland, I want to be able to run a key binding on a window, not in focus. And very recently, Wayland Global Shortcuts got merged into XDG desktop portals. But now, we are waiting for the backend implementations for each of the different desktops. Over on the KDE side, it's just done. They've got it working already. Now you just have to wait till it's actually available in a release. On the GNOME side, they are sitting on design documents on WL Roots, it's not much is happening. There's like a couple of comments and they're like, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> it's actually so bad with WR Roots that Hyperland has gone and made their own set of Hyperland protocols to deal with what WR Roots is not dealing with. Which, if you know anything about Hyperland, is kind of ridiculous because Hyperland has a native way of doing global shortcuts already. Now they're going to have two of them. So this is a feature that is absolutely crucial for effectively using OBS. When I change my overlay like this, I am doing so with hotkeys. I am not focused on the window. And if you want to use push to talk in Discord, Zoom, or anything else out there, also incredibly important. I've seen some people say, oh, why didn't you just have a hotkey to mute your mic? What if I'm streaming? What if I want to have push talk on Discord, but not break the mic on my stream? This is a perfectly valid use for having push to talk. I am all for vSync during regular desktop use, when I'm watching videos, browsing the web, writing documents, and things like this. But when it comes to gaming, the forced vSync on Wayland has been an absolute nightmare. Now, some Linux gamers don't really care about it, but many people out there simply did not want to deal with it, I being one of those people. 
and we're happy to you know, have a little bit of screen tearing if it means better latency. If I want to enable VSync, let me choose to enable VSync. And about a month or so ago, a new protocol was added to basically allow this to happen. It has been merged now, but we're still waiting on things to actually propagate out downstream to the desktops you actually, you know, are trying to be using. At this stage, I don't think GNOME has any interest in doing this, but KWIN, WR Roots, obviously Western, and there's also some stuff about GameScope as well, so you'd expect to see this over on the Steam Deck some point into the future. But if I remember correctly, Valve implemented this a little bit earlier than everyone else over on the Steam Deck. For the rest of the Wayland desktop, it's still kind of a waiting process to see when this is going to be completely ready. I would be incredibly surprised if it doesn't happen during 2023. Earlier I mentioned HDR in the context of the Cosmic Desktop, but that's not the only work being done. There has been support at both the driver level and the application level for quite a while now, and in the case of those applications, you can go and use them if you circumvent your Xorg or Wayland Desktop. The problem is those Xorg or Wayland Desktop. And there's probably never going to be support over on the Xorg side because there's just not the developer interest in actually doing so. If you happen to be an eccentric millionaire, eccentric billionaire and want it to happen, I would appreciate it. But until that happens, the actual work is being done over on Wayland. Over on the reference implementation Western, there's both an implementation roadmap along with a protocol outlining how this is actually going to function. And then GNOME also has their own potential implementation. Both of these are very, very far away still. I would not expect there to be working HDR in 2023, unless maybe Cosmic manages to work something out. But there is definitely going to be a lot of work being done on this, and we may possibly start seeing some early testing being done. And then hopefully in 2024, maybe we have HDR then. I'll probably do another one of these videos sometime before then. By this point, I hope we all know about the Steam Deck. But did you know, Valve still has it locked to which regions they are selling. The US, UK, Canada, the European Union, Japan, Taiwan, Hong Kong, and South Korea. Now, Valve is generally fairly tight-lipped about anything involving their company, and just as much so for the Steam Deck. But I hope in 2023, we see some more regions start to open, whether that be South America, Southeast Asia, Africa, Europe, outside of the European Union, Australia... Obviously, my hope is for Australia, but everyone in all of these regions and all of the regions I didn't mention just want to give you money, Valve. Let us give you money. I've been following the work of the Aussie Linux team and the Open M1 and M2 drivers basically since they first got started, and I expect these drivers to only get better and better and better, support the hardware in a more complete way, in a more optimized way, making a better use of the hardware, but right now, Asahi Linux is still its own separate thing to set up. There are some distros that are starting to ship some of the Asahi Linux packages, but you still need that Asahi Linux kernel. And my hope is by the end of 2023, some of these early Asahi drivers are being shipped directly with the kernel. They've been merged upstream. It is still quite a while away till we see full support for the Apple Silicon hardware on just any random distro you install, but it's not as far away as you might initially think. Maybe my hopes are a little bit too high, but it doesn't seem impossible. But sadly, not everything is going to be good. Around mid-2022, Mesa added some new build options to disable patent encumbered video codecs during building. This included H.264, H.265, and VC1. Following this, Fedora and OpenSUSE disabled these codecs, 
breaking GPU to code with AMD GPUs. This is due to insanely backwards US patent law that they wanted to just be absolutely sure they weren't breaking. And I thought that would be the end of it. And then recently, Manjaro decided to change my mind. Manjaro did the exact same thing. Following this, even SteamOS did the same thing. Now, SteamOS did revert this because I think they didn't mean to do so. Someone just wrote a bad build script. But I hope that this is the end of it and we never hear about this codec issue ever again. I don't think that's going to be the case, though. I feel like someone else is going to break this. And just to be safe, let's just assume that Manjaro is going to reset the mistake timer at least 10 times? It's probably going to be more though. Now, for most of these topics, I have done full videos explaining all of my additional thoughts. Be sure to go and check those out. But let me know in the comments section down below what things you're excited for in 2023. Is it anything on this list? Is it a completely separate list? Or do you not even know why you're watching this video? You don't even know what Linux is. I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, sell your bearer pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Opton Plays. That's going to be it for me. And I'm out.